In today's video coming up, everything about edits, bootlegs, remixes, covers, are you allowed to make them, are you allowed to release them and make money with it, how to get the permission if needed, and what happens if you just release them. And believe me, out of experience, you should know about these things, otherwise you will get into a lot of trouble. Take me to the promised land This was your final warning Don't act like you're the last to know You had the chance to save her Be her savior Now leave her alone Hey guys, welcome to the studio. Yes, the drone is back. If you haven't noticed, I already got back a couple of days ago to do those nice intros for you and just because flying is so much fun. I just checked at home your demos. As you know, I have a label, the Accents label. The past releases were all quite successful. I had like a quick summer break in between that is now over on the 17th with my own release and then two more releases following, maybe a fourth one this year and then like three, four more next year. By the way, if you're interested to send me your tracks, the link is down below in the description where you can send the demos to. I will listen to every single track and send you an email back to let you know that I've listened to it and if I like it and it fits to the label. As an artist, I know how it feels to send out demos to labels and never get a response. So I'm definitely not doing that, but while going through the demos, I realized that a lot of people send me actually songs that, that are impossible for me to release because they're either edits, remixes, they have like elements in them that are not allowed. So I thought about addressing this in today's video, explain you everything about edits, covers, remixes, how to get them actually released, if it's allowed to release it, when it's allowed to release it, and everything that is behind it so that you know if the song that you've made that is using someone else's material is actually legal to put out there. And you will probably not like the answer. First up, let's actually start with like a little history lesson, just really quick, because actually the first thing that was done were bootlegs. I can guarantee you now that I'm trying to find one, it will be impossible, but somewhere here in my record collection are a couple of, of bootlegs. But yeah, this right here is a bootleg. They're also called white label because they just have a white label. There's nothing printed onto them. Those are usually or almost always illegal presses of songs, edits, remixes, covers. And this one was actually in this cover, Daddy Jenkins Gasolina. I'm not sure if it's, it's the right one. Let me actually test it really quick. So yeah, it's actually Gasolina, <laughs> it was once a cool track. As you can see, it says you clean, dirty, instrumental. I, I marked it myself, I even marked here a spot to know where the song starts to be able to scratch it in. Those are illegal presses. You could buy them in record stores, people were selling them, and since there wasn't the internet around and you couldn't send tracks over the internet, that was the only way to get edits, remixes that weren't official. I once tried to release something like this and the guys pressing the vinyl just told me straight up, no, they're not doing it. It was a very cheesy remix that I tried, so so it's actually good that it never got released. Let's not talk about it. So those white labels were all illegal and nowadays a lot of people do edits. Edits are also not legal. Covers are also not legal. Remixes, unofficial ones are also not legal. You can't do these kind of things and release them. That's just not possible by law. And if you send them to my label, I for sure can't release them. There is just no way. Some bigger labels like Spinning, if you make a Rhythm as a Dancer, edit or remix, please don't make a Rhythm as a Dancer or Show Me Love, edit, remix. There is so many out there, please <laughs> no more of them. <clears throat> I actually also made once a rhythm as a dancer edit, but I never released it, luckily. Let's actually start with the first one and that is like a cover. It's the most effort, so you have actually to get someone to sing the same lyrics as in the original and the same vocal melody. And if you do so, it's basically all your track. You got the rights to the master because everything that was recorded is the master recording, the one that's then released, and it's all your rights because you've made it. But the lyrics, and the vocal melody is not yours that's copyright protected and you will have to ask the publisher that 
owns the rights to it. Usually if it's a huge hit, a publisher owns it. Sometimes it's still the artist, but you have to get in touch with them, send them emails, try to get a response from them and ask them if you're allowed to do it. And that's usually possible. If I want to make a cover, I know who to call, where to write to, and the publishers are always happy if someone makes a cover because it means like, again, money for them. But if you don't have a singer and songwriter, which is the case for a lot of young producers just starting out, messing a little bit around with vocals they find online, that's another case because here you're taking the recording of someone else. You take their master and they have the right to it. And the master right is usually owned by the label or the artist, so you have to ask them. And on top of that, you have to ask the same persons, the publishers, that you would have to ask if you do a cover. Because now you're using the master, the recording, and you're using the copyrighted lyrics and, and vocal melodies. And between a remix and an edit, it's a fine line. For me personally, an edit is if you take like a complete song and build around it and try to make it into a remix. A remix is more official thing where someone is asking you to remix it and you get all of the separate stems and you can work with it way more freely and be way more creative. But it's both at the end like changing the master and also using the copyrights. And if you're asking yourself what happens if you still release it without asking them and without having like the official allowance of that is coming up after like a short break, I have to take care of all of the business stuff, work on some music, promote my final warning. No, not final warning, my we run a track that is coming out on the 17th of November. So time to get started making music. Turn it up, turn it up, feel the high feeling now. All done with work and the uh, ice pack laptop cooling method is working kind of fine. I didn't have any hiccups. I don't know if this will ruin my laptop eventually, but at least it's working for now. And that's like the most important. I know a lot of people are just releasing their edits and remixes. This always also happens with my remix contest. Some of you guys just release it, put it out there on SoundCloud, YouTube, and this already, like just putting it publicly available out there, it counts as a release. It doesn't matter if it's on Spotify, Apple Music, if it's a download on CD, vinyl, once it's available for everyone, and especially if you make money with it, you will get into trouble. Just for example, my edit of Nina Simone's Sinner Man that I released like four or five years ago on SoundCloud, maybe it's even six years, no, five, four, I don't know, a long time ago. It got to like 200, 250,000 plays just like within a couple of months. And then Universal, the ones that have the rights to the song, they got in touch with me and let me tell you, it wasn't that pretty. They gave me like two options. One, they sue me. And number two was I sign a contract that the edit belongs to them. They get all of the money and I'm not getting sued. So of course I signed it. It then got officially released on Universal, which made me a little bit proud because I mean, yes, Universal, huge, major thing. And that's also how I got in touch with them now. They actually signed me to their publishing. So it was an important step and I don't regret it. But still, keep in mind, it's actually not legal, but in most practical cases, you won't get into trouble. Either your song doesn't get a lot of place and no one cares about that, or your song makes a lot of place. And then usually those people that own the rights will contact you and make you an offer you can't refuse. I was even kind of lucky. They gave me like a very small percentage share. I'm legally not allowed to talk about it, but it's less than, than a percent. And even the percent is capped to an amount that is absurd small it's I don't know why they even gave me that I, I could have just signed it and, and gave it to them for free and still these edits remixes bootlegs covers make totally sense especially for new artists because you can show your skill people can relate to the original and know what you've done to it they can also sing along to it you don't have to take care of getting vocals and the songwriting which is always like the hardest part and if you're lucky you might get signed to a big label but don't expect any money at all ever this will never happen no one will ever for stealing give you money that that's definitely never the case. For example, Eric Pritz, Call On Me, was also once a white label got then officially released, turned into a huge hit, but I'm pretty sure he never directly got money from this song. The original owners of the copyrights got all of the money, but he still had like the promotion. And from there he could make like his own stuff and just rise to the top 100 DJs. Same thing pretty much with Felix Yan's Omi song. Not a huge fan of that song, but same thing also with Vankelmood and his one day recognition 
recognition song or whatever it is called. He even once told me in person, as you know, I did the radio show with him. He was a guest, he made a guest mix and, and he told me the entire story behind it. And yeah, it was a lot of trouble, a lot of lawyers. I think even in his case, the, the edit was so huge that Sony backed the original artist who's from Israel to actually release it, but he didn't want to because he didn't like it, I think. So it took them a while, but I think they solved it just with like giving him a lot of money. Yeah, that usually helps. So making these things is illegal, just to let you know that if you release it, it's your own risk. Usually nothing happens. Sometimes they will just block it, ban it, or take it down. This happens on SoundCloud and YouTube and you might get a strike. If you turn it into a huge hit, get a lot of plays, the big labels will come. Don't worry about that. And some companies are working on solution. I think like, I think Mixbank or some other platform where you can actually do edits and remixes and they will distribute the shares to the original right holders and you will get a small share. I don't know how far they are, but this is definitely a modern solution because now Nowadays, everyone is just used to take everything they can get and do whatever with it, what they want. But still be careful. My case was a lucky one. A lot of other people got away with doing edits, remixes and bootlegs and covers. But I also know cases where it went horribly wrong. For example, a Get Physical artist, that's like the label where released a couple of things in Berlin. They made an original song and they used one little small instrumental sample out of someone else's track, a totally unknown, I think, Turkish singer songwriter that was doing like flute stuff and you couldn't really even hear it in the song they released it no one noticed it but then the track got bigger and bigger and they wanted to make sure to get the permission of the guy by asking him he found out that they used it and then he sued them and it took like five years until it got solved it was juma's sound system i think back then they were like a team two people and after this whole court case now just one guy is left i don't know if it has to do with the court case or just in general one of them didn't want to to join and continue but um, I know there was like a, a lot of money and time and lawyers spent on this case. If you want to be safe take the safe route and just try to get in touch with the people ask them send them your version ask them if you're allowed to use it if they say no definitely definitely never ever release it this will get you in a lot of trouble if they don't answer keep at least the proof that you sent them the emails and try to get in touch with them this might help you if it ever gets to a court case. I hope you enjoyed today's episode I I wish I could go outside and fly my drone more, but it's like pitch black. I hate this daylight saving time. I think no one likes it and no one understands why. It's just making the day shorter by one hour. I don't get it. So let me know in the comments what you think about this topic, edits, remixes, covers. Do you just release them? Do you get the permission? Did you ever get into trouble? What's your opinion on this matter? If you have any questions left or I forgot something important, just let me know about it in the comments. I will try and answer it. Don't forget to like, subscribe. We will see us tomorrow again here in the studio. As you know, no, this is a daily thing. I hope you're joining this daily vlog DJ producer life because I think I'm the only one that is so stupid to do a daily vlog for almost 500 days about music production, DJing. But I'm really glad that you're joining this, that you've watched the video up until to the end. Thanks a lot. We'll see us tomorrow again. Sign out. You can actually not imagine how these records smell. A couple of years ago where I was DJing with the records, someone spilled a tiny bit of beer into some of my vinyls so you still get that strange late in the morning after our booze kind of club smell. <laughs>